Namaste, angels. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, newcomers, as well. This is the biweekly reading for the sign of Capricorn for the period of tomorrow, Monday, January 13th, through Sunday, the 26th, two weeks from now. Um, we're going to get right into it. There's a lot going on with Capricorn and your ruler, Saturn. So I just want to briefly mention those things very quickly. What else will be happening over the period of the next two weeks? Happy birthday, by the way, to the third deacon Capricorns, because one of the things that's going to be happening is the sun will be entering Aquarius. Happy birthday, you know, to all of you guys, the Cuspians, um, the Aquarians who are cross watching because you're so close to Capricorn or you're, you're dealing with one or something like that. Happy birthday to you all. Okay, let's get into what else is going on over this period. So beginning with tomorrow, um, the first day for which this reading is Monday, January 13th at 1.39 p.m. Venus enters Pisces at zero degrees. January 16th at 1.31 p.m. Mercury, the ruler of the sign of Gemini, did want to mention this too because you have um, Major Arcana card, the magician surrounding you. And Mercury enters Aquarius. So again, because it falls into this period where the sun also enters Aquarius, I wanted to be sure to mention it. It could be this card could be um, more importantly than being connected to potentially a Gemini in your life. I think it may be connected to Mercury, our ruler. January 17th at 7.58 a.m., the third quarter moon happens in Libra, 26 degrees Libra. January 18th at 5.31 a.m., Pallas enters Capricorn. Definitely wanted to mention that. So Pallas is, a, is an asteroid similar to Chiron. I think it's one of the largest, actually. Um, I talk about all of this stuff in a little bit more detail in the general reading that I did for the week for the collective, which is posted already. It went up this morning. Uh, so that is also at zero degrees Capricorn, just like uh, Venus entered at zero degrees Pisces. January 24th at 4.42 p.m. The I'm sorry, I'm skipping January 20th at 9.55 a.m. The sun enters Aquarius, zero degrees Aquarius as well. And then January 24th at 4.42 p.m. The new moon in Aquarius occurs, four degrees Aquarius. So that's what else is happening. And I just really wanted to mention it in connection to these cards, just in case. So the card that's most directly uh, representing you this uh bi-weekly period is the four of pentacles so this is your energy pentacles is earth and um this can be this card can be about you know frugal spending um even if you're like giving to charity and stuff just doing it in a really disciplined way which would be super earth signy but Moreover, it's really not one of my favorite cards because the the uh, the reading the the meaning that comes tends to come through stronger is this holding on to things too tightly, including ourselves and our emotions. So, like withholding emotion, withholding love, or clinging to something that we need to let go, whether it's a job, a relationship stuff in our house we're hoarding you see how this guy he's holding on very tightly to the pentacle on his chest and he's got the other two under his feet so they can't go anywhere this one he's a little bit a little bit uh looser with so maybe somebody can grab that one these he's not letting anybody have you know they represent a three of pentacles so he probably worked very hard for that uh maybe this came in a little bit easier and so he's not as concerned that may be where you're at also in general um the four of pentacles can be about anxiety and fear and i did see a lot of that coming up in for the, for the collective not for you guys specifically for the collective in the general reading and also some of the love reading um that is for the collective so you may want to check that out as well it's only about love i don't talk about anything else love for about an hour uh <laughs> you know so you may want to get into that we could be fearing specifically things having to do with money and or career, which may make sense in this spread because the card that's in your position of money and, um, you know, finances, work and finances is major arcana card 16, the tower. So maybe you are in the foreseeable future. You're expecting something to go on with your job. You work for, I don't know, a plant that's going out of business. So you're holding on tightly to your money. 
you know that you want to make a move, you want to change jobs, you plan on quitting, maybe you're going to start your own business, you're manifesting something with the magician here, and so you want to be a little bit frugal and hold on to some of your money because you're not going to have this income anymore, right, very, very soon and, and suddenly. That could be the case. Um, I want to get back to the focus on this a little bit more, though, for a minute. So um, it can be about wanting to be secure and so like having anxiety about being sec about security and so that's why you're holding on so tightly to the pentacles it's just there's just a need to make sure that you don't do it to the extent that it becomes toxic and imbalanced right because it is wise to be you know carefully spend your money it is wise to Maybe, you know, shop around and make sure you get the best price, the best deal, the best quality, whatever it is. It, it becomes unhealthy when it becomes obsessive. Um, so when, with regard to work questions, for the four of pentacles, I mean, you guys know I, I tell the story every time. The four of pentacles becomes like one of my least favorite cards because it's one of those that gives me this feeling of you're going to this job you know, day after day after day, why? Because you get a paycheck, which is good. No one's not going to paycheck, that's for sure. But you have no emotional investment in this job. This is, you are not passionate about what you're doing. You don't even like getting up, going to this place. You get there, you don't like the people, they don't like you, you don't like the place. You just, the only thing that you like that's good is that you get a paycheck. But you can get a paycheck somewhere else. You can get a paycheck somewhere that you do like. And I think that for some of you, this fear is about the future. Fear about moving forward. Like you have opportunities. You, you guys have been manifesting. You know, this is like my fourth, fifth reading for you guys. And it's been progressive, right? We keep moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. So a lot of you have been starting your own businesses or at least laying the plans for those things. You got, you know, you guys are very methodical. You got to lay plans first. You don't just all of a sudden wake up one day and start doing something. That would be more, more air signy. Like we're sort of random. But you guys... You know, you're very careful to make sure that things are thought out. And so I think that some of you have become, or maybe right now in this moment, are, become, are being, behaving so carefully that it's becoming, um, it's, be, it's becoming sort of toxic because it's, it's like, it's becoming imbalanced. It's becoming imbalanced. And, you know, you want to get back into your confidence and that, what, you know, whatever this represents, if you are starting a new business or you did recently, you know, quit your job or get a big raise or promotion and you're concerned, can I do, can I do the work or can I live up to this or whatever? Um, you, you, you know, you need to leave whatever those emotions were that were that are restricting you in the past, you know, and embrace your future because you have worked hard for it. And because the, in this spread, <laughs> if we're going to refer to the cards, all the other cards are very, very positive, right? So we have the magician, meaning that you have the ability, the wherewithal to, you know, do anything you want to do. Bring anything into your life that you want in your life. Remove anything from your life that you don't want in your life. You can do it all when you have the energy of the magician surrounding you. You have, um, also for me, the tower is not automatically a bad card, by the way. I know a lot of you know people say, oh, it's, it's horrible, you get it, it's just terrible, it can't possibly mean anything good. That's not true, uh, in my opinion, but I'm going to skip over it for a second and go over to the Three of Pentacles. The Three of pe Pentacles represents a worker energy. Again, it's your energy directly, right? The Pentacles, the Earth. And it is about reward for the, the effort that you put forth. You're not just getting paid because, you know, money's falling out of the sky, which is nice too. We all like that when, you know, gifts just seem to come out of nowhere. But this you earn. So there is something about, you know, when, you, when you've earned your own money, there's, some, there's pride in that. There is, um, you know, maybe some sort of uh, possessiveness about that. Like, well, you can't have this one. You can have this one because this one I came by easily. But I work for this. You can't have this. And that's what the Three of Pentacles represents for me. It's being rewarded. It's being recognized. It's being promoted. It's getting a raise. It's being lifted up. It's receiving abundance for your work. It's abundance that is earned. And then here, 
of an, as an overall energy, you guys have the Nine of Cups. So again, getting back into this manifestation, and maybe that's why the tower is showing up. Maybe you manifest a new job. Maybe you manifest your own company. And so, wow, oh my God, that's overwhelming. That can be why the tower shows up. Doesn't mean it's negative, right? We can be overwhelmed in a positive way. And this is about your dreams coming true, your wishes being granted, your prayers being answered, you successfully manifesting just like this energy that is surrounding you suggests you will be. The other people around you may be doing the same, right? Your friends, your family members, um, you know, people maybe at your job, other people, maybe you're going to do a partnership, right? The three of pentacles can often be about a group, a partnership, work that we've done in collaboration. That's how we brought about it. That's how we earned these things together. Everybody had to do their part. So, Having this magician here sitting next to you, and it may be in particular a Gemini that is significant in your surrounding energy that's helping you to do some of this stuff, but doesn't have to be, of course. It may be an Aquarius. Again, Mercury is entering Aquarius. I think that could represent that, but it does not have to be. But you could be collabing with other people, right? Some other people could be helping you to make your dream come true. In love, this Four of Pentacles is similar to what I said about work. Like... We're, we're not very happy, you know, in a relationship when the four of pentacles shows up. We want out, but this person helps us to pay our bills or they help us to take care of the kids or they help. They, some, there's something that's like, you know, well, yeah, this totally sucks about it. You know, we, we haven't been intimate in a year, but my mom really likes him or her or, you know, it's the, this, this something that's this benefit on the side that really doesn't warrant you know, putting your life essentially on hold and living like a miserable existence. This benefit that you're getting does not warrant that. But people, you know, we all do it. I'm not, you know, talking at you guys. I've done it too. You know, I probably stayed married a lot longer than I should have because of my kids. And then I realized, hey, what am I showing them? I'm showing them like an unhealthy relationship. I'm showing them, I want my, you know, and I, this was sexist of me, but I really did think this way. I didn't really necessarily think of my son. I thought about my daughters. I want my daughters to see, you know, when you're in a relationship that's full of love. Me and their father, we have a relationship that's more like siblings, you know. We're, we we love each other, but we we didn't have that kind of romantic love that I think should be as part of a marriage. Or we didn't have it anymore, at least. Maybe we had it when we were 20. And so... um you know, but for the longest, I, I held it together and I stayed in that anyway because I thought that I was showing them, oh, look, you know, this is a, a family that we're holding together. It had, it had to dawn on me. I had to have a huge major revelation. Like, no, I'm showing them what it looks like to not be, you know, super in love and to just be going through the motions and, and existing, but not really living, not really feeling. And so... That's what the kind of that's what the four of pentacles makes me feel in terms of love. With a crossing, the three of pentacles, there could be some sort of party of three going on in your life. Not necessarily a love triangle, but of course that is a possibility. And maybe want somebody wants out. Maybe that somebody is you, because again, this is your energy uh, and wants to make changes. If it's um, not a love triangle, how could it otherwise be a party of three in terms of love? Maybe it is something like, well, this is who my mother wants me with, how my dad wants me with, my friends think this is the best person, you know, or there's some other thing that's keeping you there, or the kids, right, um, trying to make it work. Now, if you legitimately um, are not happy, but you want to remain in a relationship and want to make something work, then we'll talk about that too a little bit when we get closer to that Three of Pentacles, because the Three of Pentacles has, um, you know, one of those meanings of, it's a good omen in terms of love, you know, especially if there's already a committed relationship and or, you know, somebody in whom you're already interested, you know, or who's interested in you, know that that person thinks of you very highly when the three of pentacles shows up. So maybe you, maybe again, it's a party of three. You got to rid yourself of one person that doesn't think of you highly or, the, or where the love isn't there and, you know, release them so that you could have the other. That's a possibility there. So again, the magician can represent your energy or, you know, maybe be connected to close friends, family, co-workers, something going on. It's a super positive omen. And that's why I really want to make sure that you guys don't worry about this tower and um, let you know that I think the tower 
re ironically, represents your worry. You know, it's the worry which came first, the chicken or the egg. So if you can release that, because when the magician shows up, it's a very positive omen in the reading. Um, it's about, again, resorting to this higher power and strength that you have. You know, you just, you've been just touching the surface with what you can do. And you got to reach out and take advantage of this very, um, this much higher power that, you, that you've that um, evolved to, like your higher self. And speaking of this strength, I should have mentioned what these cards were here too, because they sort of, you know, outline what the overall overall theme and, and feel energy of the reading is and it's super super positive for you guys true strength is displayed through kindness forgiveness and compassion you have tremendous personal power and courage the magician is doubling down on that saying you have tremendous personal power all you got to do is reach out and use it because it's there for you and it turns up that way and it means that in every single aspect of your life you know in a general sense you could be um really really uh um, intuitive right now and experiencing what they call synchronicities, seeing, you know, number sequences and other things. It's like, huh, you know, you see somebody's name repeated over and over again, everywhere you look, everywhere you go. Those are what we call synchronicities. You could be experiencing that. You could be getting a lot of intuitive uh, message in other ways too. And seeing a lot of signs like from heaven or from the universe, from God, however you want to, you know, categorize it in terms of work. It tends to mean there's going to be an improvement in your work life. So yes, it's crossing the tower. It's because the tower is here representing your work life because it's going to be so overwhelming. This, this new thing, this new, um, maybe your new paycheck. Look what's underneath the strength card. It's your energy again. And it's about doing well. The nine of autumn, your success has brought you financial security and the reward of much deserved time off to enjoy your own company. You may suddenly have a brilliant idea. That can be what this is for a business or for self-employment opportunity that will be very successful. Why will it be very successful? Because you've got all this positive energy supporting you. All right. You guys have moved into a really, really awesome place, um, phase. So this, um, strength card also in any air, any and every area of your life that it shows up is super positive. It means you have the strength and the wherewithal, the ability to face any and everything that comes your way. In terms of love, it means you have the strength to support your partner and you are very, very likely in a relationship that is mutually supportive. They are supporting you too. And you guys share this. It's about balance with the two here, right? The partnership, um, your health, your finances, everything. If it's not good already, you know, over this two weeks, this is where we're going to see the progression. This is where we're going to see things greatly improving. Why? Because we've been waiting. We planted the seeds. We did everything we're supposed to do. We're Capricorns. We're earth signs. We always do, right? But Capricorn is the workhorse of the Zodiac. You always do the work. And so here it is. Here's the, the um, evidence of that. This is like a seven of pentacles kind of card. This is your energy too. And now you're just awaiting the results. You're reaping. It's time to reap because you've sown everything. You've sown the seeds. So let's get back to the magician for one second. Uh, like I said, it's very good about every sing in every aspect of your life. Um, but I was talking about the work and career. Something very, very positive could be coming. Um, and it might be like in a really creative field or in an area in which you are creative. So it's going to be something that you're passionate about as opposed to holding on to a job where you just get a paycheck and you're, you have no emotional investment in it. Bigger and better things, period. That's what it's about. Promotion, raise, recognition. You're getting some sort of award, some sort of certificate. Something is good. Or you're getting a new job. If you're unemployed, you're getting work, you're finding work. And maybe you're finding not only work, but work that you, you know, this is what, this is my life's work. This is what I wanted to do my whole life. It's that sort of thing. In terms of love, if you are looking, right, that you're very, very likely to meet somebody new in the very near future. So possibly even right during this two weeks, you could meet somebody and that they could be like the one. Um, you know, somewhere out there is looking for you as um, hard and, you know, as you're and dedicated as you are looking for them. And you're going to find that right person, Mr. Right, Mrs. Right, whoever it is. But you, you can't be in the house looking for them. You got to be like outside. You got to be, you know, mingling around other people. If you're already in a long term relationship, when um, the magician shows up, it's likely to go to deeper <laughs> and, and more sweeter. That's what I've been calling it all week levels. So if you see the, if you've, if you've seen the love reading, you know that I did a similar spread, um, 
four cards, but one was for each element. So I did fire, earth, air, and water. And of course they cross and people, um, you know, they, they um, are intermingled because maybe you're um, an earth sign, but you are a fire, you know, moon or something, or you, you, the person with whom you're dealing, your mate. So sometimes they can all apply. Well, every single card had the same meaning, basically, that relationships were about to get so much deeper and so much stronger. So I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not surprised to see it showing up here in your energy. I, I can't really express, I, I tried very hard in the love reading to express the kind of levels um, that I was talking about, but this is ascended love, right? This is really going deep with the love. So now we can talk about the tower. <laughs> I feel like I've like got you guys ready for it. Um, there can be arguments and things at work. It's in your position of work and finance. It can be arguments and things at work uh, when the tower shows up. Maybe that's how you you know, make decide to make the move to your new job or to running your own business. Maybe it's just like, fuck this, I quit. I, I don't need this kind of, you know, aggravation. Maybe it's something like that. If you want to keep the, a job that you're in, then know that the tower in this position can mean the potential to lose your temper. And that way you can, you know, try to maintain better control. If something does come up, you can remember, oh, oh yeah, I saw that reading. It warned of this. I'm going to whatever with the major arcana cards my my feeling my sense about them is that we have no control over the fact that this energy is coming in um but we still we we still and always have control over how um our be our behavior and our actions and our reactions to other things so just because this energy comes in and tries to affect you doesn't mean you have to allow it to all right you know, or you can minimize the impact if, you know, it's, it's inevitable. Um, but yeah, something else could happen. Somebody's, you know, you, something could happen to the company. It could suddenly close maybe unexpectedly. And that may put you know, light the fire under you. I'm, I'm looking at the fire here and I was even thinking, I didn't kind of didn't want to say, but I was even thinking like a, a company, a business or something could burn down. I'm not seeing anybody be hurt, but I'm like, you, you know, that's why you come in and it's like, uh, the company's closed, you know, all right, now what am I going to do? And you, this has to be a new way for you to, um, earn money or something. In terms of love, uh, it can also be about a relationship. Sometimes it's coming to an end. And like I said, maybe you got, you know, more than the number of people that you want in your relationship. Maybe there's an extra person, a third wheel. And that's why you're feeling four of pentacles ish. Four of pentacles ish. And you want to, you know, cut it down to only two people. And maybe that's why it's a relationship's ending. So, yes, the tower showing up can be like, oh my God, look what happened. But you need you know, something sometimes to initiate whatever your next move is going to be, you know, to inspire you. And if that does happen, know that it's because better love is out there for you because that's what the three of pentacles means, right? The three of pentacles is not like, you know, crappy love. It's a really positive omen in terms of love. And again, it means somebody like holds you in seriously high regard. That's how I wanted to feel like that's what I was describing before. And I know my husband does hold my ex-husband does hold me in high regard as a person, as the mother of his children, and maybe even, you know, as a friend, you know, whatever. I just didn't feel necessarily as a wife. And so if you're having those kind of feelings um, and, and that's why you're wanting out. It's understandable and something better is out there for you where you will be made to feel like a wife or a husband or, you know, whatever it is you're looking for. You will. It's out there, but you have to let go of the thing that that's inappropriate for you first. So. There may be a need for patience. Threes can be about patience. Four, four is a more action, right? Fours are like our foundations, but we're doing something. You know, we've, we've manifested something. It's actually happening. Threes are like, we're still, we're still working. It's on the horizon, but we're not quite there yet. So there may be a need for patience um, if you're single and looking for love. But it does mean that you're very likely to meet somebody, possibly through work. And so maybe that's why the tower is here. Like, oh my God, I never plan to date somebody at my job. Because I knew, I know I used to be like that. Like, nope, nope, not at my work. You know, that, you know that saying like, you don't shit what you eat or whatever. I was very one, much one of those people. But sometimes love just towers you. And that's it. You know? Um, 
next thing you know, <laughs> you're dating somebody from the job. Um, so, or maybe somebody that you go into business with, you know, the partnership develops into something more where you have a partnership at work and a partnership outside of work. So that can happen too, but you don't have to meet somebody at work. Um, when the three of pentacles shows up, it just means it's very, very possible, but it's very likely period, whether you do meet them at work or not, that you guys who are open to meeting somebody will meet somebody very soon. Keep your eyes open. So what else did you got here? Let's go over these other cards. The underneath this, the next card is upside down, thankfully, because it is, oh, I guess I was meant to pick it up though. It is sadness and isolation and it's card number three. So it's another three and it's like the three of swords, which would be indicative potentially of a breakup and maybe again, you know, something going on with a party of three and, um, you know, we're dealing with the hurt, but it was in reverse. So I normally wouldn't have talked about it, but then I went ahead and picked it up and guess what was upright behind it. The six, it's like a major arcana card, six, the lovers. It's called love in this deck. I'll go ahead and read this card for you. And then I'll give you um, your advice cards. Let me get the book. I think for a lot of you, this is about love that that's, you know, what, for what you've been praying, bring me a higher love. You know that song? I think that's what you've wanted. Um, cause these cards definitely speak to that. And again, strength, you know, it is an, it is a two. It's an, an 11 is a two. So it can definitely be about partnership. Card number six, love. Keywords associated with this card, relate, choose, harmonize, romance, Creativity, reconciliation. Take some time to examine your relationship with others as well as yourself. Are you coming from a place of love? It's important to empathize, remain non judgmental, and to love people for who they are. The same applies to your relationship with yourself. There's an opportunity now to bring your being into harmonious whole. Forgive your faults and rejoice in your perfect uniqueness. It may also be time to examine the choices that you're making in matters of the heart. Are you choosing to have people in your life who support and empower you? Right. This is about a higher power. That's who you should be looking towards. Somebody who supports. When I talked about support with the strength card and empowers you. Not just regular mediocre love, higher love. Surround yourself only with those who encourage and sustain you and who push or guide you to be all that you can truly be. The magician, right? That's who you're supposed to be with. This will help you to value yourself and to raise your vibration to that of unconditional love. There may also be an opportunity for new romance, for improving an existing romance, or for healing a disharmonious relationship. Remember I said, some of us may want to keep the relationship. We just don't like it as it is. So we got, we're not happy the way it's going. So we got to work on it. We got to fix it. Seize this energy and take action. If you're looking for a new romance, make yourself available to be open. Like I just said, right? Where that? This will... This will, wait, sorry about that. Oh, see it and feel it in your life right now. So like visualize it for it to come through. That's very one. That's very magician. That, that's how we begin to manifest things. We have the thought, we, you know, we visualize it. We make a focused intention in our mind on this thing. So see it and feel it in your life right now. This will raise your vibration and attract that new love to you. Magician's all about the power of attraction, the law of attraction. If you're looking to improve an existing romance, then maybe it's time to be creative. A weekend getaway, a romantic dinner, or simply telling the person how much you love them. Right, getting out of your rut. This is like a rut. Like we go, we come back, we pay the bills, whatever, but we're not, we're not enjoying life. We're not living. So you got to switch it up a bit. 
And that could be overwhelming too. If you, you know, somebody surprises you with doing something out of the norm all of a sudden, or you surprise them, that can feel like a tower. Like, oh my God, like, I can't believe you did this, or I can't believe we're doing this or whatever. So we can get away a romantic dinner or simply telling the person how much you love and appreciate them. To heal a disharmonious relationship, open a dialogue. Let the person know that you value the relationship and that you want to improve it. And they have an affirmation that um, one can say if they're interested. I honor myself as well as others by acting from a place of love. The traditional tarot archetype for this card, as I mentioned, is the lover's. Further to that, from the Animal Tarot, additional advice for the masculine, the Princess of Summer, the Page of Cups, sensitive, kind, open-hearted, and inexperienced. This is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, or someone likened to those traits or attributes, or it is an emotional message, right? It's something that makes you emotionally happy. It puts a smile on your face, makes you feel good. You get news, you get invited out, you know, you meet somebody new, or you reconcile with someone. It's those sort of things. You can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic friendship. That could make you feel good too if you resolve a friendship that maybe had some sort of discord. You may suddenly receive an emotional message from someone or be invited to a social event. And the emotional message can even be about the new job or the promotion or whatever. You know, can doesn't have to necessarily be connected to love when it's this, it's just something that's gonna make you very happy. That's what it is. For the feminine, the five of summer. So we like wallowing in some sort of disappointment and we gotta be careful about this. We're in the process of manifesting. We gotta let go of energy like this, like, oh, woe is me. Well, I doubt it'll be good. You know, that's the opposite of what you wanna do. That's pushing something away or potentially manifesting negativity into your life. When we have this high power that we're working with right now, we can attract only the things that we want. If we, you know, do it right. Focus upon the fact that God loves you and always has the highest of intentions for you. A positive outlook makes it easier to recover from life's little difficulties. If you did experience some kind of challenge, maintaining a positive attitude is going to help you to bounce right back and keep it moving, right? And continue to grow. And that way you can move onward and upward. From the psychic tower for the heart, for the masculine, it is open up. And this is like a four of cups kind of card. Um, and it's wanting you to, yeah, open up. It's wanting you to be emotional, wanting you to let love in, wanting you to stop holding on so tightly to yourself and, you know, release, let, down, let the guard down a bit and stuff like that. If you've been keeping yourself, withholding yourself, withholding your emotions, it's asking you to open up and to share, to let others experience all the, you know, amazing energy that is you. And... Lastly, for the feminine, the eight of swords, basically, helpless and hopeless. And this is a card of fear, and it goes very well with this. Again, this is the feminine um, because one thing potentially, you know, didn't go exactly how she wanted. That tends to be what the five of summer is. Like you get some stuff that you wanted, but not everything. Um, letting that take her into a place where... You know, now I lack confidence. Now I'm fearful. Now I have anxiety. Now I'm just not happy. Now I'm helpless and hopeless, or I feel like I am. You're never helpless. You're never hopeless. Again, we are always in control of our own behaviors, actions, and reactions. So think about it. How are you going to react the next time some sort of challenge, um, you know, faces you? Turn it around because you've got positive energy here. And again, very, very strong higher power. I hope you guys have enjoyed your reading. I will be back in two weeks. Namaste.